Visiting with Hewell Hauser is made possible through a generous grant from the Ralph M. Parsons Foundation. Well, it's about 10.30 on a Monday morning, and we're standing here in front of fire station number 112. There are a lot of fire stations all over our city, but this one is just a little bit different because you see we're down here in San Pedro and we're on the docks. There's a big old tanker, the NYK Seabreeze going by right now. And here, this is one of the most beautiful, one of the newest fire stations in our city. It's the home of Fireboat Number 2. And we're here to spend the day with Captain Wigert Good and morning, his crew. Hill. You have invited us to come down and, and spend a day on good old fireboat number two. Now, what is the history? What is the distinction that this fireboat holds? Well, this fireboat was built uh, during the Roaring Twenties when the Coliseum and the City Hall and the Federal Building and everything was under construction downtown. It's the oldest uh, continuous in-service fireboat in the United States. In the entire country? Yes, sir. So this is a historical landmark. It is a registered historical landmark with both the state of California and uh, the federal government. All right, let's take a look at it. Boy, look at the size of that ship going by. I guess you get used to seeing things like that. Yes, sir, and they're going to get bigger. Really? Yes, they are. This is right out your front door, too. Yes, it is. Now, what are these little tugboats right here? Just out of curiosity. This is, uh, this is Wilmington Tug. Uh, these tugs, uh, uh, we can see one up here. We've got a uh, container ship going out. He will have a tug on either side of him uh, to assist him in coming into the... There's one right there behind him. Yeah. And then there's another uh, container ship coming into port, and uh, he will have these tugs with him. They, these tugs are busy 24 hours a day. They have crews that live aboard, and they're our neighbors, and uh, they have some firefighting capability on them also. So this is a busy place. It is the it is the most dynamic area in the United States today because of not only the shipping that's going on, the growth of World Port as we call it now, San Pedro Harbor, Los Angeles Harbor, but uh, we're extending and building Pier 300 and 400, which we will show you when we go out on our. Uh, testing this afternoon. And there is one of my favorite museums in the entire state of California, the Maritime Museum, Los Angeles Maritime Museum, right down here. Yes. So you're all just kind of in here together. Right. And you've got this set up here with all of these wonderful old pictures and the windows here for tourists to actually come up here when they're visiting, I guess, the Maritime Museum or just want to come down here, look at the history of the fireboat, and then look in at the fireboat itself. Yes, indeed. Uh, this is a pictorial history from the beginning of the fireboat uh, up to the uh, most modern day. Some of the old photographs of some of the historical fires, explosions, and incidents that we've had in the harbor. And you can kind of peek in and get an idea there's the fireboat right there. Yes, indeed. The architect designed this uh, knowing the interest that's created worldwide. Uh, he's got these windows just at the proper angle so that the glare is reduced and people can come in any time and see uh, the fireboat. But you've got a special door you're going to take us in yes. to give us a real good view of the fireboat. Well, we're going to take you in and show you one of the most magnificent pieces of firefighting apparatus uh, in the United States today. So you mean even though it was built in 1925, it's still one of the most spectacular fireboats anywhere? Well, not only spectacular, but functional. Uh, over the years, with budget constraints and reductions, uh, we have managed as a city, as a harbor, as a fire department, to keep this piece of apparatus in service because it's invaluable. Well, let's get inside and take, oh boy, look at this. Look at this, Louie. Boy, it is, <clears throat> it makes a good first impression, doesn't it? <laughs> well, uh, I'm impressed every morning I come to work. It's, uh, it's uh, if you will, a love affair with a piece of equipment, but uh, we maintain it. Uh, 
uh, over the years it's been maintained. We've upgraded it from gasoline engines to diesel engines. We've upgraded the, uh, the power that it has to uh, perform its, its designed function, and that's to give us copious amounts of water uh, for any, any emergency that maybe we may encounter in L.A. Harbor. Wow, it is a big boat too, isn't it? Yes, it's, uh, it's a 100-footer, uh, it's 18-foot wide beam, and uh, it draws about nine foot of water. And uh, we have the tower on top uh, where we can elevate up to uh, uh, dock level and on, on deck aboard ship if we have a fire or have to supply water up there. Wow, and this is its home. Now this is a new structure. I've seen pictures of the old structure, yes. and it was a beaut. Yes, it was uh, marvelous, uh, but due to harbor expansion, uh, that uh, particular building uh, was replaced by this one. Howdy, fellas. Hi, Gil. How you doing? Good. We're ready for a big day Hi, on the Gil. fireboat. How you doing? Good to see you. Hi, how are you? Ah, they're getting Can to work be? now. Oh, yeah. Get on down there and get okay. ready. We're ready. We've been looking forward to this for a long time. Howdy. Can we just go on down, Captain? Okay, come on, Louie. They're getting it all revved up and ready for us. What do we do? Just jump on board? Yep, just watch your step. Don't hook your foot. We take our, uh, we take our turnout gear with us whenever we go aboard. Uh, we are available for response uh, with you with us, so uh, maybe we'll pick up something. So you got to be ready. And look over there, Louie. Look at this huge tanker coming in. Wow. This is exciting. OK, we are moving. We're off. Yes, sir, we're underway. Uh, as you can see, the traffic out here, we've got a bow watch up there, which we require uh, whenever we uh, come this in. This guy's the bow watch? Yes, sir. Now, what are you looking for out here? Well, for traffic coming up and down the channel, if it's too close for us to be able to maneuver into the channel, we have to wait until the traffic clears. Well, do you have, a, like, a siren? What if it was an emergency and you had to, do you get preference over over another ship that's already coming down the harbor? Well, it depends on the size of the ship. <laughs> if it's if it's a tanker or if it's like a container ship like this one's just coming through, of course, we're not. they can't give way for us. Yeah, they can't stop in but time. But if it's small traffic like we've got coming up here, this little bass boat, then, then of course, we can sound our siren. We've yeah. got our... Uh, our lights to go with it. So this is a pretty important thing you're doing right out here. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. In fact, we also use a, a stern watch under certain conditions, uh, along with the bow watch. In foggy conditions, we, uh, we use our radar, but we also use uh, bow watches and stern watches just because traffic is so heavy up and down the channel. Yeah. So there's something for everybody to do at different stages of being, of, well, there's the firehouse over there. This thing moves pretty quickly, too. Yes, sir. This, uh, this boat will uh, move at 19 knots if we have to. What are we going now? We're uh, required to stay under five miles an hour in the inner channel okay, of the so harbor. We're just barely moving right now. Yes, we, the idea, of course, is we don't want to throw up. We've noticed the tug over here. He's not throwing up a wake, and the big ships coming in are, aren't throwing up a wake. And you can see why, obviously. We don't want to disturb the uh, private craft as well as the loading and offloading operations of container vessels. There is the, look over here, Louie, there's the Maritime Museum. We're going right by it now. I've never seen it from the water before. You really do get an interesting view of what's going on the, from uh, being out here. It's the old ferry building. It used to uh, go terminate, but where that gantry is right over there, we had the ferry going across the Terminal Island Ferry for the cannery workers, mm -hmm. and uh, I've used it many, many times. Now, what are we doing? Uh, we're, What's going, next? we're going. We're going. We're ready for some excitement. Uh, we're, go <laughs> <laughs> we're going out right now. We've uh, just had some welding work done on the main system, uh, from our fire pumps to our turrets. Uh, we had uh, a leaker down there that we call it, and we just done some welding below decks. And so what we're going to do is go out and turret by turret. Uh, we're going to go ahead and test these and make sure that ah, it's watertight. So we're going to get to see some water spurt now. Yes, sir. You sure will. Good. Can we go talk to some of these guys yeah, back go. here? What's... I thought let's talk to the uh, pilot up here. 
Let you talk to Paul Hillary. He's the pilot uh, in charge of boat two today. Okay, now we're standing here with the first mate, and explain all of this to us, what you're doing here today. Well, we're just going down the main channel, heading south, which would be towards Catalina at this point. And uh, all this here is, uh, we have three drive engines on this boat. There's a center screw that has the rudder behind it and two okay. wing engines. Uh -huh. And uh, the rest of this, we have thrusters, underwater thrusters, uh, 2,000 GPM that we can use to direct the boat in a situation where we need that much power. And also, uh, <coughs> up here, we've got our under wharf nozzles that we use for wharf fires. If we have to put on uh, a large amount of water, we have the ability to put 3,000 GPM out from these as so, well as our rest So do you control the nozzles from here as well as the boat itself? I control the underwarf nozzles up here. Uh, the rest of, every, of our other nozzles are controlled from the deck. Now is this, uh, this isn't original to the boat. It's been modernized a lot over oh, the yeah, years. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, it was outfitted in 69, went through total conversion. And uh, we used to have a the real old pilot's wheel. used to have a big wooden wheel up here. Really? And, uh, at one time there were 22 members on the boat because everything was operated by hand and now we're down to eight guys and everything's on hydraulic controls. wonder what it was like back in the old days. Do you ever hear stories from old firefighters who oh, yeah. come back? And lot, you know, all the visitors we get, we have a lot of people that, uh, that worked on this boat years ago through the war and uh, they tell what it was like operating on the boat then and they heard stories before uh, before they showed up too. So there's quite a long history that goes back with some of the people we have visit. So do you really get a sense of being part of a, a very proud fireboat tradition? I personally am very proud. I love working on this boat. The fact that it was built in 25 and uh, we keep it up fairly well and hopefully get a full century out of it and uh, I, I thoroughly enjoy it. And someday you'll be coming back as an old timer telling all so. the <laughs> telling all the young firefighters I hope so. your stories of working in the 90s. Yeah, it would be great. Back in the 90s. I, I hope I can work that out. <laughs> this is part of our potential down here. We've got the fishing fleet down here. We've got the, the fishing uh, uh, boats that uh, they travel all over the world, South America. They come back in here and they refueling. There's potential here uh, that uh, we have for fuel leaks and we've been on board. We've had pump outs and we've had injuries on board. But uh, So when you look at these fishing boats or any other boat in the harbor, you're always looking for potential problems that you might have to be a part of the solution of. One leaker in that fishing boat dock back there can destroy the whole fishing fleet that's tied up in there, so we've got to jump right on it. What if do you we mean one leaker? Well, that means if he has a fuel leak of some sort, and then we have a fuel dock right there, uh, that ah. if we get fuel into the water and it ignites and uh, so forth, you can see the most of them, many of them, are wooden hull, still wooden hull. Look at all this. This so is, this is the gas tech. and oil this, and. These oil are what oil. we call our exotics here at the uh, Gatex location because uh, they have uh, commodities and product in there. This is where we had a tremendous fire back here where we had the tank that exploded and skyrocketed into the air. This was part of the uh, Gatex. Uh, and look, it goes all the way down here, too. I mean, there's a lot of and potential you, exactly. for disaster. We deal in potential here. And any one of these, uh, we could have a problem with it. You can see what happens. We're right at the mouth of Los Angeles Harbor right now. And uh, if something were to happen here, we'd have to close the harbor down, and then commerce would be interrupted. So it's uh, it, on our best uh, a behavior to get out here as quickly as we can and try to curtail the emergency. All right, we're going down into the engine room. You're going to stay up here and I'm going to go down yes, and meet please. the guy down there. Yes, indeed. Now, what is all of this? Well, these are our four main pumps out of the six up here. It's not quite as noisy here because they're not running right now. The thing we have running are the three drive engines that operate all the propellers, and that's the only thing running other than one generator right now. So it's a little quieter up here, but when we really get going and start pumping, it's unbearable down here. So these engines are all for the pumps themselves, the firefighting pump. Correct. Each engine goes to one pump. That's a dedicated engine to a dedicated pump. 
Look at this. You got this thing cleaned and shined up too, don't you? Uh, that gets the brass gets cleaned every month for our inspection. Yes. Really? These pumps were made for this fire boat for our specifications and the cast. You can see that happens to be pump number four. Uh -huh. Each each pump has a number on it. Cast in the in the top. Uh -huh. They're a bronze casting with a bronze impeller. They put put in when the boat was built, and they haven't been taken apart. They're still operating full of salt since, water. Since when? 1925. You mean these are the original pumps? These are the original pumps. Wow. Built to last. Good. Right. And when the pumps are going, you can't, we wouldn't even be able to hear each no, other. Not at all. Not at all. It's unbearable. Well, this is the cleanest engine room I have ever been in in my life. Well, thank you. We do a little bit of maintenance here. And who is this fellow down this is here? the other engineer, Bobby Webb. We have two engineers on duty all the time. If we're pumping, one of us has to stay in the control room. And maybe when we go through there, you see all how we control it. Let's take a look. So he's actually, come on through here. You actually uh, run the pumps, control yeah. the pumps from down here? Right. All of them are controlled from in here. Uh, with this quiet room, we can talk back and forth to each other. You can well imagine all the noise. You can't hear anything otherwise. They put this in in 69, makes it much easier to communicate with the pilot house and with each other while we're down here. So each one of these is for one of the nozzles, one of the... Uh, one, of, one of the pump engines here. Yeah. There's four main pumps there and two back here. These are the four for the forward, and then the other two are these here. So you spend all your time down here, you don't ever get to see the fire. That's right. We never get to see the displays or anything like that. We're down below. We're sort of stuck. Well, you're doing a good job, even if you don't get to get up on deck very often. That's what we like to say, anyway. Yeah. We're, we're probably the most important part of this thing. Without us, uh, there wouldn't be any fire put out, would there? We'll be sure and get that word out to everybody. <laughs> the most important guys on the whole fireboat, right here. That's it. That's it. Okay, you'll now brought you out on deck. This is part of our testing procedure, and uh, we'll be running through each one of our nozzles here one at a time. And uh, uh, Dan McElhaney is our uh, here's the guy on deck mate today. You're the head guy out yes, here. Yes, I am. All right, How explain to us. Can we get the, the thing fired sure, up? Sure, sure. Paul, go ahead and uh, go ahead, guys. You guys can open up. So what's happening here? Okay, let me tell, explain to you. This is the bow turd. Puts out oh, about wow. 3,000 GPMs. This one here. Let's put out about 750 GPM. Excuse me. Oh, look. Ha! There's water everywhere. Yeah, there's water. There's 3,000 here on this one I'm at. And those are the hydraulic operated valves. This is the direction. You can watch the direction of it now. I'll move it to the port side. Oh. And then we have look. your uh, vertical. And reach. you're controlling that right here. That's correct. That's it, and we have the valve to open it and close. It's right down here. And then you've got three right. on each side. Right, we've got, we're only operating four, or two on each side right now. And then down here, you you might want to take a look at this. This is an under wharf nozzle, and they use that for fighting wharf fires underneath. And he could, Paul, the operator today, he can maneuver that from inside the wheelhouse. He might have showed that to you earlier. So you go up next to a wharf that's on fire, and it gets up underneath it. Exactly, and he could make that in a spray pattern or in a straight stream like it is now. Now, how does this compare with what a regular fire truck can do? This, uh, a regular fire truck puts out about 1,500 gallons a minute, and this last test last year it was 18,500 GPMs uh, last year it was tested at. Wait a minute. A fire truck puts out 1,500 right. gallons a right. minute. Right. Yeah, it's about 15. This puts out 18,000. 18,000. 600, right. Whoa. Yeah, Three. it's a lot. Also, we carry a complement of hoses right down here in the hose reels. And this is, yeah. and this is all water just coming up out of the ocean right Ex now. Exactly. We got engineers down below pumping the pressures, what Paul calls for, and uh, that's it. And can up, you up, we have other turrets throughout the boat. Can you move this around a little bit more sure. for us? Sure. I'll bring it up right now. Paul, going up. There you go. Wow, that, that's amazing. Yeah, that's a lot of water. That's 3,000 gallons a minute at 150 PSI. This and also, underneath the water, 
about a foot below the waterline, we have thrusters. It's a thousand GPM tip, and that's used for keeping the boat in position while we're pumping large quantities of water. They're called thrusters. So he might be using them now on the stern uh, to keep the boat in position. Okay, we're cranking it up. What are you doing? You're opening up the opening up the nozzle? Yeah, the hydraulic shutoff for this one isn't working properly right now, so we've got. Whoa! Okay, there we go. Boy, that sounded like it was gonna. Yeah, there's a lot of pressure on there. It has to fill the system, come up through the barrel. These are specially designed to kind of rifle the water. It brings it around and makes it so you get the, the best trajectory out of the nozzle and makes a good firefighting hose or firefighting. This is kind of a puny squirt here. We haven't raised the pressure yet. This is just at an oh, idle. Here it comes. We're gonna, what are we going to pump at 150? We're going to pump at 100 pounds only on this. This just kind of shows you what we can do. Can you put it up a little so we can yes, see Yes, there it? again, just as, like the forward turrets, we're pumping about 3,000 3, gallons per minute with this one. And I'm operating it here with this little neural knob on my left hand. I can put it wherever you want. Wow. Left, right, real high, real low. How many fire boats do we have in Los Angeles? We've got five. Wow. We have, yes, we do. But this is the premier fire boat. This, this is, is the... Uh, this is uh, the big daddy of the fleet. Yes, it is. And it was the first one built and uh, of this size and uh, all steel construction. If you noticed uh, the rivets on the side of the boat, there aren't anything, there isn't anything welded on this hull. It's all put together with wrought iron and rivets. Now what are you doing? You're telling old fireboat stories over oh, here? Just coming up to get some fresh air. That's right, you're supposed to be been, down and... Been down there the whole time. You're up here looking around the fireboat. <laughs> <laughs> Back down in there. Back down in there. Do y'all switch around? Do y'all switch around so that sometimes you're down in the engine room too, or? No, the engineer's domain is down there. They, they maintain the engines, they do the oil changes, they do the startups for the boat, virtually all the maintenance, including rattling and cleaning rust and painting again yeah. on the keel. And but, how do you all get along with the other members of the fire department, the ones, the regular members of the fire department? The regular members of the well, fire no, no, department. No, no, I didn't mean it that way. I'm deeply you hurt. Think, no. You think they're a little <laughs> envious of us? Yeah. Well, most of us have uh, have done our time on where they're working right now, and so. Uh, on uh, regular fire trucks. Yes, sir. On fire trucks on land. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. The, we've we've most of us have done all that, and uh, possibly a little seniority or a special application like these guys are certified divers have allowed us to come down here and work at this assignment. Do you have to be comfortable on the water? What if you tend to get seasick or have problems on boats? If you tend to get seasick, then you just get seasick. I don't think it would deter anybody from trying to get an assignment down here. So this is considered primo duty for oh, a firefighter? Absolutely. And getting back to that seasick business, there's only been a couple of instances where we've been in water rough enough to really cause us to get seasick and luckily none of us did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if somebody got seasick, y'all yeah. would never let them forget it, would you? No, we we would try and bring it up every time that we could. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have almost reached the end of today's adventure. There's the firehouse right here and we're getting ready for a big moment, aren't we? Uh, this is the test for Paul. We're going to find out how good he is at backing this boat in the slip. So he's got to back it in. He's got to back it in. Oh, he'll get it in there. It's just we give him a, a grade, what he does. Uh -huh. And his best shot is to get it in without touching either side of the boat and backing it straight in the slip. And that's called a, a no touchy. A no touchy. A no touchy. So the pressure is on him today for a no touchy. <laughs> <Back in. laughs> oh, there's no pressure. He can do it. Just no problem. He well, can do it easy. This has been an interesting day. Uh, thank you all very much for giving us the no pressure. No pressure. <laughs> Given us the tour. This has been a lot of fun. A lot of fun. We've still got a finale. You and I are gonna go up on shore for the for the big grand finale. There's Paul in there now, uh, going through you feeling any pressure? No pressure. No pressure. And of course we will have the cameras rolling to make sure that it's a no touchy as we back in. It better be a good one. <laughs>
But it's been a good day, and I think hopefully all of us, uh, everybody watching today, I know I have learned a lot about the good job that you all are doing from day to day. It's not as high profile as a lot of, uh, I mean, you know, you don't see the fire truck going down the street every day like you do here uh, with the fire boat, but it's just as important, isn't it? Oh, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. We, we can supply 12 of those fire engines up there if they need the water. Mm -hmm. And uh, any other Watch your ear. emergency that comes down, uh, hopefully we'll be able to handle it with what we've got here. What are you doing? You're going to blow the horn, so you better oh, okay. hold your ears. Okay. <laughs> That's it? That, that, that. <laughs> That's it? That's a signal. That's a maritime signal that we have to use when we approach quarters to let them know we're on our way back. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> Turn the stove on. We're ready to eat. <laughs> well, that's right. You've invited us for lunch today as well. You betcha. And look, there's some. There's a, a dad and his kids. Kid that, that's something. an interesting thing, Huel, is uh, I don't know whether you're aware of it or not, but we one of the things that we do is, is we give uh, Tours of the fireboat in the station to oh gosh, cap what a couple of thousand kids a year I would think. L.A. Uh, Unified School District, were on their on their list of tours. So, uh, if you ever talk to any of the kids and they say, have you ever visited the Ralph J. Scott? Well, they've probably been here and seen us. Oh, we're going to put the number up on the screen for people to. <laughs> they're all going to be coming down oh, here for the tour. Well, that's okay because uh, we're proud of the of the old fireboat. She's been here a long time. Uh, and we're proud to tell you all about it, and, and we're proud to be here. That's, that's what I can say. All right, there he goes. He says there's not much pressure on him, no but pressure. there is. No pressure. Look at that. Look at that. Man of steel. He is a man of steel. Not a bit of pressure. This is just like the Super Bowl. No pressure at all. Okay, right now the pilot's backing into our quarters, and the, with the vessel being 100 foot long, he's got to account for the wind and the current and be able to, to maintain control of the boat. Uh, he has three propellers which to use, but uh, because of all the practice that we get, they're able to do that real easy. Uh, so far right now, he's doing a really good job. He's, he's backing in smooth, smooth and slow, and it's just it's gonna be a perfect job, I think. Uh, this is almost gonna be a no touchy as, as of right now. We'll see how it ends up. We better move out of the way. We'll get, get run over here. Uh oh, close. Uh -oh. He's gonna save it. Watch this. He's gonna save it. Look at that. Kick the stern out. Beautiful. That was an excellent back in, Paul. <laughs> he did it. He did it. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. It was a piece of cake. <laughs> Our job here is. Uh, we're, we're given the, uh, the charter of fire protection and to serve the public down here, and that's what we do in many different ways. Visiting with Huell Hauser is made possible through a generous grant from the Ralph M. Parsons Foundation. Well, now for a little fireboat update. We have come back down to the firehouse. I'm visiting with Ron Grove, firefighter Ron Grove. You weren't here when we did the show last time. No, uh, I had a choice of staying here or going to the river, so I went to the river. See what you missed out on? Yeah, I did. I get a lot of compliments. <laughs> Uh, from people who say, weren't you the guy? I said, no. It but, was somebody uh, else. Somebody else. Well, what has happened? Give us an update on what's happened. Have people been coming by? We have people that come by uh, all the time, and most of the time they compliment that they had seen us on your show, mm -hmm. uh, which is a compliment to us because and you, because uh, they do watch your show. Well, and people can actually stand up here and look through the windows at the fireboat. Yes, we, it's sort of a self-guided tour that you could read about it, look at the pictures, and see the boat also. Yeah, and you all are friendly. You invite people in every once in a while. Yeah, we invite people in. They knock on the door, so we usually give them a tour. 
Uh, depends on how busy we are. Could be a short one, could be a long one. How's the old fireboat, the Ralph Scott, holding up? Uh, it's holding up pretty good. The uh, engineers keep it in real good shape. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I was uh, with one of the engineers down at the river, and one of the guys recognized him from your program. Oh, really? We were down at Havasu. What they say to him? They just was, uh, I know you. You were on Yule Hauser, weren't you? <laughs> and uh, it embarrassed him a little bit, but he was there. Well, the boat's holding up better than some of the firefighters. A bunch of them have retired, haven't they? Yeah, the captain's gone, and uh, <laughs> the engine, one of the engineers down below that you talked to, he's gone. Most well, of the guys are still here. Well, firefighters come and go, but the good old fireboat number two. It's still here. It's still here. Thank you, sir. And come on by come and again. pay her a visit, because she's down here waiting for us. She belongs to all the taxpayers. She's She's part of the history of this harbor and of our city, and she is a real asset to the department.